Hi fellow dog fanciers, today's video will not be about whippets but don't be disappointed as it will still be important and if you like story times this one will have quite a few and it will probably be a long one so grab a snack and something to drink, hug your whippet or another dog if you don't have a whippet or your pet if you don't have dogs, just hug something and let's get started. I'll talk about the unexpected situations we have to deal with sometimes when having pets, the heartbreaking moments we have to go through that are unfortunately a part of the game of owning animals and how I came to the very sad realization that I will never own pet rats again. Where do I start? Let's start with uh, one of the two main reasons. When I was 22 years old, without warning prior to that and not even in my, my childhood ever, my body decided to download a brand new software update, Allergic Asthma. Honestly, that was such a bull. It all started with the flu and a very, very bad asthma attack, which lasted around 36 hours until I managed to get a hold of a doctor in the Netherlands where I used to live at the time. Then a bunch of allergy tests, x-rays, lung function tests and more that basically proved nothing else other than I was a perfectly healthy human with the lungs of an athlete. I myself, not a doctor or testing, I found out that one of my triggers and my only trigger at the time uh, for the allergic asthma was my hamster's dirty bedding. So I only needed my rescue inhaler when I was deep cleaning the cage and when my hamster passed away of old age, I decided to get another one because apparently I love animals more than I love myself. Yeah, whatever. Fast forward to 2019 when I moved back here permanently me and my sister decided that we will get my dream pet other than obviously dogs and horses and that was rats. And because I didn't have any sort of asthma attacks, not even mild ones for almost two years, if not more than that, I kind of forgot I was allergic. If you think logically, otherwise you would connect the dots. Hamsters are rodents, rats are rodents, I am allergic to hamsters, so I might be allergic to rats, but no, Dum Dum didn't think of this one. Fortunately, Dum Dum was very lucky and at the beginning rats didn't trigger any asthma attacks and I loved and lived happily with our first two rats, Buffy and Toffee, and five months later we got two more, Prada and Chanel, and I still had no issues. And then Dum Dum, that's me, if you haven't yet figured it out, decided it will be a great idea to get even more rats. So after Buffy passed away due to pituitary tumor, I've made a whole video on that, we got five more rats at once three girls and two boys and we also wanted to have male rats uh, not to breed i never had this intention but rather to get to know both genders as they are quite different from each other and decide what we would like to own in the future and we had the space and the means so why not so the day we got the five new babies i started having the worst asthma attacks ever. After a year and a half of owning rats and not having a single issue, everything unlocked with full speed and I swear it was worse than ever before. And I was very angry because I got so used to not having issues, my inhalers caught dust on a shelf, they even expired, I'm not joking. I was really living a life of an allergy-free person. That was in March last year and by June the attacks started to decrease until they fully disappeared and for the summer I had no problems and then in the middle of September they started coming back 
uh, which I guess was also due to the weather getting colder and more humid. And I had the worst winter in my life. In a day, I had to use a rescue inhaler between three and five times. And at night, I was waking up every two hours reaching for the inhaler. It took me forever to figure out because the rat room is right next to mine. At night, I'm breathing their air when I'm hypersensitive anyway. So when the uh, light clicked, I started to close their door every night before bedtime and I finally started to get some good night sleep. Every night the rats go out for 30 to 60 minutes and I can't be with them for more than 10 without fighting for my life, so I found a solution. Yeah, it's ridiculous, but it solves my problem, so the rest doesn't really matter. Keep in mind that I only use my rescue inhalers. I refuse all types of other allergy medicine, corticosteroids and everything else that the doctors tried to make me take because I fear of their side effects way more than I fear the asthma itself. And so far I am working on resolving uh, most of the out of the blue uh, symptoms and causes with natural remedies, supplements, exercise and healthy diet, which uh, to this point works well, but at the end of the day I am still allergic to my rats. And also guess what? My sister who takes care of the rats together with me started being allergic to them as well two months ago just that she sneezes a lot and has a runny nose and she was never allergic to them or to other rodents until this point. I hate that I can't spend more than 10 minutes around the rats without having to start to fight for a breath of air or that I can't love or cuddle my own animals without having to wear this huge ass transformers face. I can't enjoy them as much and it's gotten very frustrating to say the least. I will however never give them away, that's why I have found multiple workarounds to be able to give them the same care and the same amount of attention with a few sacrifices on my end. And even though the allergy is not my fault and something that I could have predicted, it's not theirs either. And with an animal, I take the responsibility that I will care for them until the rest of their days, no matter what. So rehoming is out of the question. If you thought that's the end of the video, oh, we're just getting started. Since December 2020, I have been to the vet with a rat more times than I've been with any other of my pets in my whole life. Starting with Buffy and her pituitary tumor, for the first week we were at the vet every single day, then twice a week, then every week religiously to make sure that the treatment works. Then a few months later Chanel started dripping drops of blood uh, like a dog in heat which is not normal for a rat and is a huge cause of concern. So the first possible appointment the next day we took her in, ovarian cysts. She was in such a bad condition due to the loss of blood and the vet was not optimistic at all and gave her less than 24 hours of life. Yet many visits later her cysts disappeared and she was better than ever. Then story time. One day after in the morning Chanel was at the vet for one of her checkups. In the afternoon me and my sister went to give her medication and we almost had a heart attack after what we saw. We didn't see Toffee at first and we were asking ourselves where is Toffee and then we saw her laying in one of her baskets and where her eye was supposed to be there was blood pouring everywhere. There was blood pouring on her face, on the cage, on the basket, it was everywhere. After working with a vet for a few years, I've seen some horrible injuries and some gruesome wounds, but because this was my own animal, my heart sank, I tell you. 
For a few seconds, I could only see black. I grabbed my phone, I dialed the vet who was closing in 25 minutes and I was like, I don't know what happened. There is blood everywhere. I think she doesn't have an eye. Now that I think about it, I probably sounded like one of those 911 calls that are circulating the internet completely out of my mind. So they told me, if you manage to bring her here before we close, we'll take care of it. In the peak of late afternoon traffic, we arrived five minutes before closing and they took her in. So we waited outside because at the time, due to COVID measures, we were not allowed in with our pets. I could only hear squeaking and throughout this whole time I was thinking how they'll have to sedate her to take what's left of her eye out and stitch it up and she'll have to live with one eye for the rest of her life and I was also thinking that probably it was an accident due to a neglect on my part because there must be a piece of metal sticking somewhere in the cage which poked her eye out and it was all my fault. Ten minutes later, the vet brings her back to us, smiling, and she says, don't worry, she has her eye. So she just had a cut on her eyelid, and due to all of the blood vessels in that area, uh, there was that much blood. And my theory is that she probably got in a scuffle with one of the other girls, and because they have such thin, sharp nails, probably one of them caught in her eye and managed to scratch her eyelid. Fast forward to this January, again Toffee, the one with the scratched eyelid, at the time two years and four months old, started to show signs of pituitary tumor just like her sister, but this time it was way more aggressive and the symptoms developed way faster. Of course, we went to the vet who wanted to give her a chance, so we started medication. You guessed it, vet visits every single day until things stalled. Uh, but she was uh, bad to the point where we had to soak her food and feed her with a spoon. And one morning after her vet visit, things started to get worse by the hour until in the evening her nervous system shut down and she was completely paralyzed and that night she passed away. And it was another heartbreaking loss. And then this February I decided that we will have the boys Salem and Blade neutered. So after many tries of booking an appointment, after some vets were quarantined and then the surgeon was quarantined due to COVID, I finally managed to schedule an appointment. We left them there in the morning and we were supposed to pick them up in the afternoon or when they were ready. And then while I was working, the vet calls me and tells me today is not the day. She told me how she took Blade out of the cage to get him ready for the surgery and out of the blue he started to panic, gasping for air and he acted unconscious for a few seconds before he came back to normal. She wasn't sure what happened, was it a respiratory issue, was it a heart problem, was it a stroke, no one knew. She kept him there for a few hours to make sure he is okay, completely free of charge, which is very kind. She didn't want to risk his life with surgery after what happened and we agreed that we will postpone it for two weeks later given that they are acting fine and they are healthy under my observation. Nothing was wrong with him and two weeks later off we go for a second try to get rid of those little pairs of raisins and this time it was successful. Fast forward to a week ago, Prada, who is now two years and seven months old, started showing signs of pituitary tumor, which broke our hearts because we don't have the heart and the gut anymore to take more of this annoying tumor and its devastating symptoms. We took her to the vet to evaluate the situation. I had to call a different vet because ours was and still is on a holiday. And uh, when I trust a vet, it's very difficult for me to feel comfortable with someone new who I've never even met before. But yeah, we had to do it. 
it turned out her reflexes are so good, her nervous system is not yet that affected and she is still fit for life and we started medication. But as of yesterday and also today, I feel like she is starting to decline again and I have booked an appointment with our regular vet finally to evaluate the whole situation with her and to decide if it's worth trying or if it's time to consider her quality of life. In addition to that, Chanel has grown to very large memory tumors, slow growing, so we took them quite a few months to get to this point. But due to her age, which is also two years and seven months, a surgery will be a death sentence. So sooner rather than later, they will start to restrict her um, badly enough for us to also consider her quality of life. I don't know why we've had so many issues with our rats so frequently, and I don't mean those that were caused by accidents, I mean the tumors, maybe it's because here in Bulgaria rats are fairly new and breeders haven't yet had enough time to breed out um, health issues out of their lines. And maybe it's just the luck we've had, I'm not sure. And it's not like here, there are many places where you can get rats. Mostly there are backyard breeders that breed just because. And there is only one lady who very seriously puts effort and time into selective breeding and achieving something nice. Regardless of why all of those health problems, vet visits and terminal diagnosis are starting to get a little too much for us. While I can handle them financially and I'm not bothered by the huge amount of money I have spent on the health of my rats, emotionally I am starting to break. Rats are like tiny dogs, they're amazing little creatures and we love them so dearly and we hate to see them suffer and with both my allergy and my now sister's allergy, I don't think that they are the perfect pet for me in the long run anymore. You can now say you should have known that rats have these issues. I knew that and I knew that way before I got rats. What I didn't know and I didn't expect was that every single one of my older rats will one by one succumb to some sort of very aggressive tumor. The younger rats are now 14 and 15 months old and to be honest with you I am truly scared of what we have to deal with once they start growing old at the same time. And eventually as much as it was hard for me to admit this to myself I just had to and I reached the conclusion that I am not a human who is fit uh, to own rats forever. Rats are honestly fantastic and it hurts me that I will not have any more baby rats in my home ever again. But if you are watching this video and you are considering owning rats or you just got some rats, please don't be afraid that you might turn to be allergic to them or that all of them will suffer some sort of health issue. This might not happen at all, it's just um, our story and the uh, difficulties that we had to deal with. And for anyone else watching, this video is also to show you that owning pets, no matter what type of pets they are, is not only rainbows and unicorns all the time. We have to accept pets with both the joy they bring us and the heartache they come with. And that was it for today's video. I think it was long enough. I am sorry if it felt a little bit dark. I know my channel is generally very positive, but sometimes I want to also talk about the reality of things, which is not always pink and purple. And with that said, I think that videos from this sort will also be important. So thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely week. 
and I will see you shortly with a new video. Bye-bye!